Hi everyone. This little mini lecture is on passive voice and I mean it for those of you who are struggling with the concept. Maybe you took a quiz and you didn't do so well on it and you're, you don't know what you're doing wrong. First thing I want to say is that it's not really about tense. That's the one of the key ways that people screw up. They, they try changing the tense of the verb. They think they're solving the problem that way. So it's not about tense. It's really about word order. So what do I mean by word order? Well, in the normal English sentence, we have the subject, the instructor, and we have the verb, broke, and then we have the object, what did the instructor break? So I'll just write above this S for subject, V for verb, and O for object. So that's how most English sentences are. And it's, if you study different languages, the verb is in different places, the subject is in different places. So this is very particular to English. So this is active voice. You have subject, verb, object. Now in this case, the verb is a transitive verb. It's not always the case. In the second example, I have dozed off as the verb. So I'm going to write a V over that. And then class is the subject. And the, su and the class dozed off. And there's, notice there's no object in this particular sentence. I wanted to give you one where there was no, where this is an intransitive verb. But notice the subject is still before the verb. That's the, that's the important thing, subject, verb, object, or subject, verb. Okay, let's look at this third example. So I made it a little bit more difficult because I have a little prepositional phrase here at the start. So then the subject, I'm putting an S over the coach, he's the subject, or she's the subject. Uh, followed is the verb, put a V over followed, and then who did the coach follow? He followed us, so we're the object, us is the object. So again, the coach followed us. Makes, it makes sense. Um, passive voice is very different, it doesn't follow this pattern. So that's the most important thing, word order. So let's look at the first example of a passive voice sentence. Now, the thing that is found, the object, notice that it comes before the verb. So this is the object, the thing that's found. I put an O over weapon. The verb is was found. So I'll put a V over that. And the person or the thing that found the murder weapon is way, way, way at the end. The police, this, the, the, the people or the person that found it. I put a little arrow, put a little S next to police. That means it's the subject, but it comes way, way at the end. It should be before the verb. So the active version of that should be the police found the murder weapon at the bottom of the swimming pool. And then sometimes, which I sometimes do this sentence and I leave off the police and I just have the murder weapon was found at the bottom of the swimming pool. And then that's the ambiguous part. And that's actually how passive voice um, is usually popping up. The classic example, which you'll hear politicians say all the time is, Mistakes were made. We don't know who made them. It's left out of the sentence, and that's classic passive voice. Now, I want to get a, you, you probably won't be writing about murder weapons in your paper, so I want to get a little bit more academic -y in the next sentence. So we have the thing that was written. We'll start with the verb. Was written is the verb, so I'll put a V over that. The thing that was written, the object, is the article. So this is something that you probably will actually uh, be writing in your paper. So I'll put a little O over the article to signify object. And 
the subject, the thing that did the writing, comes after the verb, a team. So I'll put a little S over a team to signify that they are the subject. So hopefully now you're seeing the pattern. Object, verb, subject. Not a good order. Let's look at this last sentence example that I have here. After much discussion over the summer, the new administrators were hired during the August break. This is actually a very good example. It's a little confusing. So uh, the verb which I've highlighted is were hired. We, in this case, we don't know who did the hiring. I don't know, maybe the president of the college, maybe a group of faculty and the president, who knows. Um, all we know is that the, the, the thing that was hired, the new administrator, comes before the verb. So I'm going to put an O over that. That's the object, V over were hired, and the subject I'm going to put in parentheses over here because we don't know who did the hiring. Now why this is a great example is it's a little bit confusing the way it's written because it sounds like when we start reading it that the new administrators are the people who did the discussion. But that's not true because they weren't even part of the discussion. They weren't hired yet. So it's people left out of the sentence who did the discussion. So uh, it's grammatically problematic. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a couple sentences and I want you to figure out if it's active or passive. I've mixed them up. So let's look at the first one. To build confidence with his employees, the manager was trying to take each of his workers out to lunch once a month. So what do you think? Active or passive? And the most important thing is, why did you make that decision? Okay, I'm not going to tell you yet. We're going to look at the next one. After noting the price of each pair of shoes, her mother was annoyed how expensive the store was. This one's a little tricky. Active or passive? I think you should commit and write down, like on a scrap piece of paper, what you think it is. Okay, and then finally, if viewers put aside their biases and tastes, the movie can be experienced for what it is, a real piece of art. So write on that scrap piece of paper, active or passive. Okay, guys, so let's see how you did on this little mock quiz. Uh, so two out of the three are active. So let's look. Hopefully you thought this one was active. The person doing the trying comes before the verb. So I'll put an S over manager, a V over was trying. So because manager comes before the verb, active. In this case, her mother it's the subject, so I'll put an S over that. She was the one who was annoyed, so I'll put a V over that because that's the verb. So that's also active. So I've hopefully you thought those were both active. Now this one, I said it was tricky because it was annoyed. It sort of has that same sound as a passive voice, but you can't go by, oh, it has was, ed. You can't do any of that. You have to think word order. That's the way you're going to do this. And then this last one, you've probably figured out by now, it's the passive one. So the verb can be experienced. I'll put a V over that. That's the verb. Now who does the experiencing? We don't know. It's, not in, it's nowhere in the sentence. The subject is missing. A true sign that you have passive voice. And another big clue 
is the object, the thing that is experienced, comes before the verb, not after, which is where it should be. So object, verb, no, no person in here is doing the experiencing. You kind of have it up here in this uh, subordinating clause, but it needs to be down here before the verb in order for it to be active. Okay, so hopefully you did well on that. If not, that's the great thing about videos. You can watch this a couple times until it sinks in. Okay, good luck.